This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, Red Letter, that's Alex, White Letter, the Ramble, that's the name of the program, and we're here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen. Short is good unless you're Joe Rogan. Oh, a short is good unless you're Joe Rogan. That's the voice of Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah. And uh, he's out there in uh, California, where gas prices are what? Uh, uh, Sunday night, I got it. I got the last batch for five dollars. Now it's like five forty. Wow, wow! Because California is like the most expensive in the country. Yeah. Because you've got all those extra taxes and stuff they threw on there. Right. Yeah. The killing us. And you're driving what car? I got my old Camry. Gets how many miles to the gallon? Uh, it does about 23. Oh, really? That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah for it's a pretty big car. So. I thought it would be uh, eating up gas like crazy, like getting 12 miles to the gallon or something. No, no. That's, uh, I was reading some guy that got a truck for work. He's spending $2,000 in gas a month now. <sighs> so those guys are getting killed. Wow. 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 So, I remember the, uh, do you remember the first gas uptick in October of 73? I don't, I, I remember an uptick. Uh, I remember, here's, here's how I remember. This is my gas history. Okay, let's go through my gas history. And it's 82 years worth of gas history. <laughs> okay. When I first started driving a car, when I was a kid, uh, at uh, 16, I guess I could drive in California at that time. With, it was with the learner's permit, or could you actually drive at 16? I can't remember now, but I started driving at 16. And uh, gas was, I believe, if I remember correctly, 29 cents a gallon. All right? Yes. But then they would do something called gas wars, in which the gas companies tried to compete against each other by lowering their prices. So one would lower it by a penny, the next one would lower it by a penny, next one would lower it by another penny, then the other one would lower it by a penny. Eventually, I was buying gas for nine cents a gallon. Shit, <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. During during one of those price wars. Yeah. I remember, and they used to give you they would give you things that they give you glasses and things. Oh yeah, yeah, that. yeah. And also, remember this, folks. Uh, you well, remember this. None of you remember this. I remember this. Maybe Larry remembers this. You would pull into a gas station, and four people would surround your car. And one would be checking the oil, the other would be doing your windows, another one would be checking the air, and another one would be pumping the gas. Do you remember that? <laughs> I do remember that, yeah. Yeah, and they all were wearing, like, these outfits with uh, plastic bow ties, or rubber bow ties. Do you remember, do you remember that at all? don't remember that, but uh, I do remember that like, you'd actually get service going into this place. <laughs> Yes. And now it's you, you know, can I have some help with this pump? Fuck you. You know. Yeah, you, you can't even get air for the tires anymore. They well, charge you for that. They right? charge they charge you for air. Yeah. Think about this, folks. Air, right? What are the things that we have on this planet that are free? Water and air, right? Not at a gas station. They cost nope. you money. <laughs> so you know, and then then and then I remember. It I, I think it stayed at twenty nine forever. Jeez, I mean, I think when it was I moved in the twenties forever. Then October of seventy three, there was a there was a little skirmish in the, in Egypt and Israel, and uh, that's when gas went up to forty five cents, and that caused uh, that caused actually a recession. Wow, wow. And now, of course, we, we, we you could see it go up to seven dollars a gallon in California. 
It is in Southern California already. Oh, really? Yeah, L.A. is higher. Oh, jeez. That's horrible. That's terrible. Oh, well, you know, I mean, uh, uh, my question is, you see what's going on in the Ukraine. If we need to do these sanctions against Russia, is it is it worth it to you to pay a little extra at the gas pump or a lot extra at the gas pump to help the Ukrainian people, which is essentially what we're doing? Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> I'd rather have cheap gas. Oh, you'd rather have cheap gas, okay, than a live Ukrainian. Okay, we we get where yeah. you're <laughs> where your motivation is. I just think, I don't know, Putin. Putin's the guy I don't think you want to mess with because I could actually see him launching. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, 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 listen, if he launched a, a nuclear missile anywhere, uh, he would be dust within seconds, you know. So I, it, it, he, I don't think they'd do that. I don't think they'd do that. I'm, I, I think those are idle threats on his part. He's simply bluffing his way through this whole thing. You know, he doesn't have the the people to. He doesn't even have the army to handle this. They don't know what to do. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know why he did it. But uh. he did it because he's crazy. I think he's literally gone nuts. He's got he's got like uh, what is it? Uh, what's the disease where you shake a lot? Um, Parkinson's. Parkinson's. I think it's Parkinson's. Or it's, does he? Oh wow, that does that does affect your mental ability. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's Parkinson's that he has. And if not, it's MS, but it's one of those things. And he supposedly doesn't have his wits about him. Suppo- oh, okay. Supposedly, if you if you watch him, he holds his hand either on his other hand on a table or his hand under the table because it shakes like crazy. Yeah. That sounds like a horrible disease. Well, I hope he has it. I hope it suffer. He suffers. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, suffers slowly. You know, I mean, it just it's just insane. It's just insane. Uh, why can't we, we... You and I have never lived in a world that was totally at peace, have we? No, it's always some war going on. There's always something going on. Somebody impinging on somebody else and so on. And so World on. War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq. Iraq just. Well, you know what? Here, here's what I, always, what I was saying uh, the other day on the program. It was that we, the problem we had is we did so well in World War II because we came back feeling a sense of having saved the world. Which is not exactly true. There were a lot of other people involved, and to this day they get a little pissed when we act like we saved the world in World War II. I mean, the British, how many died in Britain? And how many Russians died? 25 million Russians died in World War II defending it. Yeah. You know? And and they've always hated us for years when we go, oh, well, we saved the world. What do you mean? 25 million dead in Russia... They they uh, they they put their people against the the muscle of the of the Nazis. Uh, so, but we did do good. You know, there was no question we had to go into the wars we went into there. Uh, the, uh, the the Pacific War was different than the war in Europe. The war in Europe, we were fighting to stop Hitler and stop totalitarianism. And in the Pacific, we were just fighting for our asses. Because they yeah, attacked. That, the, uh, yeah. that was the amazing thing that we fought a war on two fronts. Yes, but anyway, so uh, uh, I mean, it, it was we and we came back and we felt pretty good about ourselves, and that's okay, that's okay. You know, we we should have felt good about ourselves, but we felt we could do it over and over and over again. That we could save the world, and we could go in somewhere and save something, and on and on and on. And what happened in the end? Um, is that since that war, we've never really fought a just war, you know, and we've never actually won a war. I mean, we didn't exactly win in Korea, okay? No, it was kind of a stalemate, and then Vietnam, we lost. We lost, and uh, in the in the Middle East uh, with Iraq, 
uh, we didn't really win that one. You know, in fact, there was nothing. No, and there, huh? no, and there was absolutely no reason to have that one either. Exactly, exactly. So you know, I mean, uh, it, 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 we we really haven't had a successful war or a just war that we've fought. You know, for really just purposes until this thing has come along. You know. And this is a humanitarian crisis, no question about it. And so, you know, that being the case, since I'm not of battle age, as it were, um, I mean, even if I went over to Ukraine right now and said, I'm an American, I want to fight, where's the front line? Put a gun in my hand, which I would do in a second, believe it or not. Um, and I'm not a brave person, you know that. I'm, in fact, I'm known, <laughs> I'm, I'm known far and wide for my cowardice. Um, I just, um, you know, uh, I would do it, but I'd get there and they'd go, "I'm sorry, you're too old to fight." You know, what do you mean I'm too old to fight? Give me a goddamn gun, let me f- kill a couple of them f- fucking Russians. You know, I feel sorry for the troops that are over there, the Russian troops. They don't want to be there. Doesn't sound like they want to be there. I don't know. It's just uh, they they were told uh, they were told that they were going on a uh, what do you call it? I'm just uh, you know maneuvers maneuvers. No, they weren't. But anyway, you talk. I talk too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't like interrupting you. Okay. Well, I think that's uh, that. We're not going to human beings. I think we seem to be very warlike. I don't see that changing. Do you? Well, you know, I always felt that uh, that you know I believe in in, uh, in evolution, okay, and I believe that evolution is a good thing, and uh, a, a a a a thing that exists that we we do not remain the same, and that we evolve and so on. But the fact is that we really haven't. You know, where this no. is concerned, we are still as primal as we ever were. You know? So. You can't breed it out of us. You can't, it, it, but what is it in us that makes us do this, Bubs? Uh, I think we're just animals, so our, most animals are territorial, and uh, I think we just... But you would just think with evolution we'd become less territorial. You would think, but we haven't. We've gotten just, we haven't gotten better at all. Because being territorial isn't really, doesn't do anybody any good, you or anybody else. So no. wh- why are we territorial? I have no idea. I have no idea. You know. Uh, but uh, it's, it's scary, and it's scary when I see somebody like Putin doing what he's doing to not an indefense of people because they're holding their own at least this is being we're recording this on a Tuesday and it'll be played on a Friday so by now I could be it could have all changed but they've really held off the Russian bear quite well yeah I thought they would be down in a day so. you know what I heard I heard they, they you know they've had various estimates on the Russian deaths which you're never going to get an accurate amount because Russia is not going to say that they've lost a lot. They said they lost 450 people. The estimate is they've lost almost 11,000. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, take that, Putin. <laughs> you know, they lost, I don't know, about 1,000 Ukrainians. I don't know the amount, but uh, it's, it's not. It's certainly disproportionate, let me put it that way. And I can't believe that it isn't making the troops get a little discouraged, you know, because they thought they were just going to run in there and just wallop these people because they were just the nice little Ukrainians. What kind of warring abilities did they have? And they fought back. And, you know, we don't learn a lesson in life, I guess. You know, and the lesson to be learned from, say, Vietnam was never fight a land war against people uh, who have something to lose, you know, because they're going to use any means possible to fight you, whereas your troops are kind of going to go, well, I'm not going in there. I could get killed. So, anyway. Yeah. Uh... So, as, 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 as the selfish part of Larry Brown now 
wants cheaper gas and doesn't care what goes on to the Ukrainian people. I see. I never. I thought you were more kind of humane than that. You know. No, I just want. I, I just want cheap gas with a drill, baby, drill bumper sticker on my car. <laughs> oh boy. Well, you know, it's our chance to kind of do our part for the war. You know. Well, did you ever be, were you ever, uh, you served in the military. Yeah, I served in the military. I served in uh, the Her Ma His Majesty's Navy. Uh, and you, uh, that was before Vietnam. Well, actually, I was being let out. Uh, what happened was, when I was being let out, I was being mustered out with a bunch of people I had actually been mustered in with, because we all were Navy Reserve, which was a two-year stint. And um, so we all wound up in the same barracks waiting to be, you know, given our, our walking papers. And one of the guys I saw there had a bunch of ribbons on him. And I looked at his patch because they all had patches. When you got a patch, you got a patch for the ship you were on. It was over the shoulder, on your shoulder. It was kind of like in an arc, Okay. And if you ever look at a Navy uniform, look for that. It'll tell you what ship the guy's on. Uh, and um, mine said USS Topeka, and then I think it didn't say, I mean, it probably still said USS Topeka, but uh, I was with the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. So um, I'm, anyway, I'm being mustered out, and I, this friend of mine comes to me, and it said the USS C. Turner Joy. And I said, you were on the Sea Turner Joy? Because it was the Sea Turner Joy, and do you remember the other ship? Uh, no. Okay. See, I got bubs on one. The USS Maddox. Maddox, okay. And what were, what were the USS Maddox and the Sea Turner Joy? They were, the two, they were the two boats that were allegedly attacked in the Gulf of Tonkin. Oh, wow. Okay, and uh, that's, uh, big. That was that's what uh, that was what escalated Vietnam. Exactly, and that, that was our excuse to go in there and kick ass and take names, or so we thought we were going to do. And uh, I'm talking to a guy, and I said, "And you got all those ribbons, boy! You're a, you're a hero. You were out there in this big battle." He says, "What big battle?" I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "There was no big battle out there." He said, we went to battle stations. We heard our guns fire a couple of shots out into the night. Then they, we, they secured us from, uh, from battle stations. And the ship went back into port, and we came back, and we were heroes. He said, nothing went on out there. We just fired into nothing. But we had to say that we were being attacked. And I went away with that story. And then when I went to ABC, I told that story on the air, and I was told by C ABC News, oh, you can't tell that story. That's not true. I said, it is. I, <laughs> I, I, I was mustered out. No, you don't, just don't tell that story again. Wow. And a couple of months later, it came out that nothing went on in the Gulf of Tonkin. Yeah. And they came back to me, and they said, how did you know? I said, I told you. I listen. You know? And and uh, I had the same problem with them on, on Nixon going to Russia and signing a treaty that included uh, a deal for Pepsi Cola. And they said you can't say that. I said and I had said it. And then a couple of months later, they come back to me and go, "How did you know he signed that treaty for Pepsi Cola?" <laughs> and I went, "You know, if your news department would quit sitting there in an office, typing into a typewriter, and go out and just listen." You would probably get some of these scoops, you know. So, but it, but it was you know that was a war that was that that was a totally tragic war, the Vietnam War. It just made no sense at all, and it tore this country apart. You remember that? You remember the times, right? Oh, it tore the country apart as uh, probably almost as bad as a civil war. I would say, you know, I mean, uh, th there were there were kids who were suddenly made criminals because they went to Canada rather than fight. 
and uh, it was just it was it was horrible in this country, and it had a, a detrimental effect on our our psyche as a nation. And and uh, so, what good did Vietnam do us? Nothing. But doggedly, we kept we kept fighting it, hoping that somehow. You know, it's that old thing about what is insanity. You know, it's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting the same outcome. And we weren't going to get the same outcome. You know, I mean, it's just, it was amazing. Just amazing. Yeah, I was, so, I was at the very end. I was possibly going to get drafted. And my father said, we're going to Canada if that happens. <laughs> and then I, then the draft lottery came in and I didn't get I didn't get drafted, but uh, that was a rite of passage. Most like you had to go through that. Everyone had to serve two years. Well, I I was before the war, before the war, before the Vietnam War. So I went into the Navy just to keep from getting drafted into the Army because they even drafted during peacetime. Okay, right, right. Everybody so, had to go. Yeah. So I remember. I guess it was from a Marx Brothers picture in which uh, there was a sign or something that said, uh, uh, join the Navy and see the Army at work. You know, so <laughs> I, I, I took that seriously, and uh, I, joined, I joined the Navy. And also my father said, the food's better in the Navy. <laughs> yeah, the food's better in the Navy if you can eat it, but when you're on a boat and it's going back and forth, you're going to vomit. I'm sorry. You're just not, food is not going to look good to you. No. <laughs> and then Nixon ended the draft. Did he end the draft? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Well, he, they really had to. You know, it was so dispiriting. And uh, I think, I mean, they may bring it back at some point if we really have any major, like if we suddenly go into World War Three and we need troops. They may bring it back. But um, I, I was not eligible for the draft at that point during Vietnam because I had already served in the Navy, so I had done my service to the country. Um, and I spent two years in Hollywood. That was pretty rough duty. You know? <laughs> was, no, come on. You know, Dod- I mean, dodging hookers. <laughs> but, well, no, I mean, you know, as I like to tell people, um, enemy planes never got past Santa Monica Boulevard, and that <laughs> happened on my watch, Okay. So you know, no, I I spent uh, I spent most of my Navy time, about three quarters of it, at the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service in Hollywood, and um, I never had to wear a uniform. Uh, we wore we wore just you know tie and shirt and jacket. So uh, only once a year did we have to put the uniform on. And that was on Armed Forces Day, so that when we came into work, everybody would know what service we were with, you know. And I, on those days, I couldn't remember how to put that damn uniform on because you got those thirteen buttons in the front, and it's not not fun. And then, oh, then you had to do the uh, the uh, the tie, which is a is a square knot, I think it is. And I never could do the tie. I had a tie that I, somebody had tied for me, and then I would just take off and never undo. So, you know. Yeah, I, I never learned to tie a tie myself. Well, no, this wasn't a tie. This was, you know, that, that it's like a scarf kind of thing. And you, you put it through, and there's a square knot in the tie. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's the Navy tie. Okay, all right. Well, you don't know from that. You never had to be in the military. No, I was. I almost. I was dreading it, though. I don't think I would have done well because I, I. I would hate to be in a job that you can't quit. That's, that's <laughs> right. Um, right? You can't. You can't leave. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, yeah. It was close to that at Live One Hundred Five, but you know. <laughs> Well, you got through the Navy okay. Sounds well, like. I got through the Navy okay, yeah. And I, mean, I, I was very lucky. I got to practice my profession while I was in the Navy. So, you know, that was good. That was really good. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going to complain about it, okay? 
But anyway, so, you know, I hope they never have to reinstitute the draft. And I, I, that, that was so dispiriting to Americans. And in the future, we're probably not going to need the troops. We just send over drones. You know, that's it. Probably, yeah. The, uh, the draft started right before World War II. Yeah. yeah. Passed by one vote in the House. Right. And I remember I saw... And then they, they, they kept it after World War II. It was the first time they had the peacetime draft, and that lasted until 73. Until... And I remember seeing pictures of the first draft, in which yeah. they just had all these pebbles or, the, or balls in a jar, and they picked out one, and they said, Number 23, you're the first person to be drafted. Hey, listen, I, we got to go here. I'm running out of time. Uh, but You've been drafted. Uh, I've been drafted. Let's talk next week, bubs. We will. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's our good friend Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, checking in with us once again, and uh, we're checking in with him. And that's cool, and that's good. You know, that's wonderful. Well, we only have one person waiting tonight in the waiting room, but he's a goodie, so I'm uh, I'm happy that he's here. Let me just uh, do this. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I gotta admit him, okay? And um, let me also do this so I know what people are. Uh, there we go. Uh, let me see here, and I got to do one other thing: put in participants here so that I can bring people in as they call, if they call. But right now, it's just you and me, Josh Wheeler. Hello, Josh. How are you? How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. You know. Uh, maybe we. Uh, maybe this is actually Saturday, and we just don't realize it. Maybe we don't realize it, or maybe it'll just be you and me and and oh. Jeff. Look at Jeff. He's in a very, that's a very nice kitchen you're in there. Is that in Georgia? Still? Yep. Still in Georgia. Boy, it's very nice. Very nice. Uh, looks like a nice house they have there, right? Yes. Yeah. Tim's. There we go. But, well, you've still got, you've got your audio still up there. You know, because you you were listening to it. Just kill your browser, I think, and you'll be fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's Whatever. one way to get rid of the audio. Uh, anyway, hello, Alan. How are you this evening? I'm doing good. How are you? Fine. Listen, I, I wanted to mention something, and he said I could mention it, so I'm going to because I feel compelled to. Uh, Kevin uh, Stopper, who is uh, a, a really good friend. He's a good friend. He well, he, of course you know who he is. Oh, um, yes, uh, uh, Kevin Stopper, who uh, I'm, I'm more friendly with than a lot of other people because Josh and he and I and Patrick get together on Saturday mm -hmm. nights and have a little little talk with each other that doesn't get broadcast or anything, and it's probably the most intelligent discussion I have of the week. <laughs> and uh, Kevin uh, probably won't be on the show for a couple of, for a while here because his mother is um how can we, you know what's going on right josh yeah, yeah yeah she's just uh ill so he's just uh just taking care of her well for, she's she, she's more than ill know. it's it's getting Correct. towards uh it's getting towards that time but she's almost 91 yeah. and you know yeah. when my mother went at 100 i just went well i could sit here and feel sorry but you know I'm going to make a lot of people lose their parents at 50 feel pretty bad, you know? Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I just, uh, I just talked to him. Yeah. Not that long ago, uh, a half hour, whatever, you know, he just kind of the same. He just stepped away for a little while to take care of that. Well, uh, 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 our hearts were with him because, uh, uh, Kevin is one of my favorite people. You know, he's just a terrific guy. And uh, we've had uh, we've had some good discussions and things like that, and you know the kind of kind of camaraderie we have when we get together on Saturdays, you know. Yep. Yeah. He's uh. Yeah. He's just taking care of that. You know. I think it's uh about the same as it was whenever he sent you a note or whatever. Kind of yeah. what he said the other day. It's just 
one of those things, you know, none of us in life can avoid is having to kind of go through that. So yeah, yeah. Well, uh, taking care of it. You know, I just, I just, uh, when this happens, it just makes me feel bad. You know, because I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. You know, and uh, I worry every day. I, I go every time I feel something. I go, is this what's going to get me? <laughs> you know. Um, today I got all upset and obsessed with the fact that I, I have mild kidney dysfunction, whatever that means. The doctor found it, and this was a while back. And I just saw it that he had written it down, and he went, okay. You know, the numbers are okay, but it's mild, a chronic kidney dysfunction and then he said drink lots of water <laughs> and don't take in suds huh yeah do well, not take in suds i'm like i'm aspirin. through I'm, I'm through with the ibuprofen yeah i was gonna say it, it'll do damage yeah yeah so uh anyway i'll just i'll I, aspirin will do most of those things right take care of most of that stuff so anyway you know um um but, you know, when I, I go, is that going to get me? Is that the thing that's going to get me? You know, am I going to have to go to dialysis with Trucker Steve? You know. I'm 20 years younger than you, and I have the same feelings, so you're not alone. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it, it's just I, I, feel, I feel bad for Kevin because I know what he's going through because uh, the biggest fear I think any, any person has is the death of a parent. Well, I wish you know. uh, I wish him happiness, and I hope that she, if his mother hasn't passed away yet, did I get that right? No. I hope sure. she's not suffering. I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, I don't know the details. Well, she may well survive it. I mean, they're making plans to put her in a hospital when she gets past this little right. problem. Well, so we'll see. You know, I that works out but I have a, you know I have a friend. I'll tell you, I have a we have a friend, a family friend. Mm -hmm. Who she and her husband? I I don't know any two people that were more linked at the hip than these two people. And a few years ago, he started coming down with uh, I think it was Parkinson's, mm -hmm. and it got worse and worse and worse. And then he had to be put into a home, and that's where he is right now. And some days he's lucid, and other days he's not. And it's like, you know, it's like she's lost him already, you know, and. Uh, she said to Marjorie, I kind of wish he would die, you know, rather than go through this prolonged suffering and so on. And and so I feel sorry for people, especially like that, who have to go with a, a person who, who really kind of loses it, you know, and, and, and is you used, to, you know, it's not the same person you knew, you know. And uh, I, I don't think I would have that problem. I don't think I'm ever going to get that way but marjorie has a good shot you know she you know she forgets a lot of stuff lately uh <laughs> and she's what four years younger than i am something like that yeah so i don't know i don't know you know um marjorie and i talk in terms of well if you go before i go and i'm thinking you know is that all we're going to talk about at this age you know if you go before i go no, in the meantime, you get to talk about all your concerns and aches and pains, too. Well, that, that, that too, too. But, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I just, uh, you know, I can't imagine life without her, and I don't think she could imagine life without me. Although I think she'd probably buy a new house or something. But anyway, you know. But, uh, so is this all we're going to have tonight? Is this all that's going to be calling us this evening? Uh, are we... Are we just the four of us here? Oh. I don't Could know. Could be. Last night the numbers were really low all the way around. I don't know why. Uh, oh. But, uh, and the Monday show still kicks ass, so, you know. What's the uh, weather in California today? It's nice. Uh, it uh, was in the uh, high 60s and early low 70s uh, <clears throat> here today. Mm hmm it's cold now. I mean, it's like 55. Well, right now it's 46 degrees here in uh, in New York. And it's supposed to, I think it's supposed to snow tomorrow or something like that. I don't know. I have no idea. But what's it like down in Georgia? Very warm. It wasn't. Uh, she said 60. 60? 
yeah. today. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But it it started raining. On yeah. And, off. and I think theoretically. Well, there's this, a co- cold. There may be a yeah. lot of rain coming. There's a co- yeah. There's a there's a weather front coming up through yeah. the through the, through the south. Yeah. And we'll yeah. hit New York eventually here. So, so uh, you're not at your house, Jeff. No, I'm at uh, our uh, sister's uh, uh, house. She collects refrigerator magnets, I noticed, in the background. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So what are you doing uh, down there? Anything exciting? Well, uh, Pam's mother is is actually down here Mm -hmm. for, uh, what, about a month? And then for a while, she's... She was at her other sister's house. Mm-hmm. And so we had some kind of like a, a vacation down in the Fort Lauderdale area. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of fun stuff. And now we're stopping by and seeing all kinds of people. What, what do you do when you're down there? Down in Florida? Uh, here? Down in Florida, much. Florida. In Florida. Yeah, we used to go down to the beach and walk around the beach. You buy stone and, crab? Uh, no. You don't eat stone crab when you're down there? They have like Joe well, stone they crab crabs. down there. They have crabs up here in Georgia. Do you know what they do with the stone crab? Do you know the story about uh, any... They break from, off a claw and throw it back in? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the cruelest thing I ever heard of, okay? Because here's, here, here's, this, here's this crab. He's floating in the ocean. He's having a wonderful time. You know, he's singing Jamaican songs. I don't know whatever they do in Disney movies, and and all of a sudden he gets oh. caught, and he goes, "Well, I guess life is over." He starts writing his little crab will. You know, it's it's over for me, and then all of a sudden they come over with this, I don't know, hack hatchet or whatever it is, and they cut off a claw. <laughs> And then they throw him back in the water where I imagine he keeps going around in circles. But then because they throw them back, because what happens? The the claw grows back, right? And they go, hey, not half bad. I got my claw back. Hey, I'm hot. Oh, wait a minute here. They're going to catch me again. Oh, fuck. They're taking off my claw again. I mean, it's the cruelest thing you could do. Just kill them and get it over with, you know? Wouldn't that be great if, you know, when you got older and couldn't get an erection anymore, if they could cut it off and it would grow back? <laughs> uh, Josh, not a high, not a high-level show tonight. <laughs> Alan just brings it into the dumper. I don't know. Yeah. Jeff likes it. I thought it was kind of cute. Well, it's good. Yeah. But, uh, well, I mean, it could happen to me, but it wouldn't matter. You know, I'd go, you know, you know I wasn't using no, it anyway, you know. So. I, my day, my night, my day was good. My night's not so good. I found out my blow-up doll's a lesbian. <laughs> okay, now that's funny. Oh, boy. Anyway. So, anyway. is anybody else going to call, by the way? All I have to do, you know, we, we could take some new callers, too. I mean, all I have to do is go over to gabnet.net. Over on the right-hand side of the page, there's a thing that says Zoom. Click on that. It automatically takes you here. You're automatically logged yeah. into the show. It's that easy. It's that simple. Um, but uh, uh, I can't imagine that, you know, it's just, I've been quiet this week. Just really quiet. Uh, although I think uh, I think a Tuesday we had a lot of people, you know. So Tuesday, we yeah. didn't even have a show on Tuesday. Yeah. What? I mean Wednesday. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's because Phil was on the show. Yeah, that's because Phil was on the show, <laughs> right? Don't say that. You're gonna make him get an ego. Oh, wait a minute. He already has. He already, already has a ego. Yeah, ego. yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, Josh. What do you think about our president's handling of this whole thing in the Ukraine? In Ukraine. I keep saying the Ukraine. Ukraine. You know, he hasn't been very aggressive at all. I, I don't I don't really think he's done enough. I mean, it, it, I don't think he's the only one. I think the whole world really hasn't done enough. But, uh, you know, they keep uh, 
they keep saying they won't do this or they won't do that because you know they're afraid it'll escalate it <laughs> but uh, escalating it might be what's needed I well, mean, no, I, you, I, yeah you know, yeah we talked about this last week and I, I mean I was clear that it's <laughs> easy for someone to sit in a comfortable chair and say things like that or whatever mm -hmm. you know because it's no skin off my backs or whatever but you know the uh, thing about it is that I mean it's going to escalate mm -hmm. one way or the other so who's Whose favor would you like for it to escalate in the world? Well, I mean, or, it, I, it, don't you think that Putin is counting on the fact that we're so afraid of starting World War III? If I hear that one more time, I'm going to puke. About right. starting World War III, that they uh, uh, that they uh, 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 let him get away with murder. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, I literally murder. I feel like, in a way, that. Biden's current foreign policy on that this issue and really some other issues before this the Afghanistan deal a lot of it I just feel like a lot of this is not really Joe Biden or what he would like to do or thinks because these they they don't they're not really consistent with what his life's work has been in my opinion you know they mm -hmm. seem to be a little bit contradictory to that and it just seems to me like he's governing or at least making foreign policy decisions based on what he thinks people will think about it like by polling if you will you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like I, I i mean i think that ideally he would like to be more involved over there and he probably yeah. believes that we should be but i i don't i just feel like that he's standing there and then saying yeah but man the american people aren't gonna they're not gonna they're not gonna like that so we're gonna take these you know little baby step things we're, we're just gonna kind of nibble around the edges i, I, I don't, don't know i don't know that that's a good idea i get the, i get the the feeling okay and this is just checking the pulse of the american public that they're really bothered by what's going on in ukraine sure. that this really they see it on tv and it, it breaks your heart Okay, and I think Americans are some of them, a lot of Americans are going. Let's fucking do something about it yeah. already. And yeah, my feeling I, is, I, my feeling is this. And I said this to Marjorie today. I said, what more was Korea, but World War Two Point Two, and then we got to Vietnam. That was World War Two Point Five. All right. And then we uh, got into the Mideast, and that was two, uh, World War 2.7. So what's another three-tenths between friends? And let's get to World War Three. all right? Yeah. You know, I well, mean, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it is, it is the, the um, uh, Damocles <clears throat> sword that he's holding over our heads, you know, and hoping that I we'll mean, believe that. Yes, Jeff? I, I think I remember from Vietnam mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of my friends went to Vietnam, mm -hmm. got shot, whatever. That's most of them that I knew survived. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people had a lot of problems from Vietnam, didn't mm -hmm. quite trust the whole concept. Mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of people grew up saying, we're never going to participate in it. In that kind of a world. well, you, you what we will never do again is we'll never have a draft because the draft was so dispiriting yeah. that it tore the country yeah. apart. Uh, and I don't believe in a draft anyway. I think if people don't want to fight a war, then you don't do the war. And I'm not saying we do the war, I'm saying we go in and rescue the uh, Ukrainians. I mean, they are being slaughtered, uh, and we have a humanitarian right to go in there and save lives. That's what we do. We're the policemen of the world. I mean, when somebody's walking across the street and it looks like a car is going to hit them, do you push them out of the way or do you just say, well, I don't own a car, so I can't have the, I'm, I can't do that. You know, I mean, here are these people, I mean, they are just being bullied by a big superpower. Who, who they're holding back, but they're not going to be able to hold them back forever. 
And I think that if we let Putin get away with this, he's going to try more. And he yeah. and he, the only threat he has that's the reason we aren't doing something about it is, well, this could be the beginning of World War III. Well, I'm sick of that shit. Yeah, well, I mean, and even if it were, he's, he's not going to defeat the world, as it were. I mean, he's just not, you know. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I just, it's like Biden is almost... You know, governing based on polling data. Or That's and I correct. Just don't, I don't. I don't. You know, care much for it. I mean, look the the policy of containment is only going to work if you contain him, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, if if you don't contain him, then well, you can't really let him get away with this. And what we're doing by worrying about this whole World War Three concept is letting him get away with it, and he's relying on that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people pushing that rhetoric, and I almost think that's what it is. I mean, I heard David Ignatius, uh, who, you know, the reporter for the uh, Washington Post or whoever, and he's mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I heard him say on Morning Joe, like maybe yesterday morning or mm -hmm. something, yeah. that, you know, the world was as close as it's ever been to nuclear war in its history, even, even closer than the Cuban Missile Crisis. And I'm like... I I I cannot agree with that. You know, there were there were documents declassified ten years ago that proved out that at that time the world was literally one minute to midnight. I mean, you know, there was a book written called One Minute to Midnight that detailed it incredibly well mm -hmm. how close we were to sending an invasion force to Cuba and how dead set the Russians at that time were to using their very small tactical nuclear weapons on our troops to mm -hmm. vaporize them on the beach, you know, which would have needed a proportional response, which would have needed another and another and another and nuclear war. I don't well, think let this me, is let, the case. Yeah, let, let me proffer this to you, okay? Um, to begin with, you want to talk about people who drop nuclear weapons. We're the, We're the only, only country who's ever done that and dropped them on another population, not just testing, but another population. But that happened, what, in 1944? I think so, yeah. In 1945, excuse me, 1945. How many years ago was that? Long time ago. It was a long time ago. And nobody has yet, has since then, in spite of the proliferation of weapons, I mean, a lot of country, big countries have these these nuclear weapons. We have uh, about f over five and a half thousand of them. Yeah, well, Russia the has about is, six and a half thousand. Yeah, the other thing you know though is is like our tactical use of that was able to end a war. Okay, but in Putin's case, I, I just in my opinion, he's not going to do anything to end a war with that sort of a thing okay mm -hmm. it's only going to escalate it which doesn't work in his favor and like we talked about last weekend if if in the process he simply destroys everywhere that he's trying to he needs annex yeah. well, what's the point of having it I mean, <laughs> well uh, what's, I, uh, the, what's the point of me stealing your car and yeah. rolling it over six well, but that's what he's done annex? there i mean that place is that place is rubble Right. right, you know, and they have no money to fight the war, and all the all the things that are going on, all the uh, the things that we're doing and the world's doing against them. He has no money coming in. How's he going to rebuild? Yeah, I mean, even you know, even small tactical nuclear weapons in an urban warfare setting is it's just going to destroy every, not just people. It's going to destroy the infrastructure, the land, the ability to use the land. I mean, bombs. you know, I, I don't, I don't know that anyone's growing corn at Chernobyl or wheat. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's, it's not. I just, that's what I'm saying. It, I don't see a way that that serves his purposes. Now, I understand the argument that he's not rational. He's not thinking rational. You know, yeah, I get all that. But I'm just saying, all that's going to do is lead to a road of, you know, <laughs> annihilation for him. I mean, to me, I mean, Absolutely. if. You know, if he sets off a nuclear weapon against anybody anywhere, mm -hmm. I mean, or he, or he the world has no choice at that point but to absolutely, you know, 
fucking destroy him. So uh, I just I don't see that. So with that said, I, I I I get that no one wants to escalate the war. I mean, look, I I don't want to escalate a war either. I mean, but when you don't have a choice, you know, but to fight, you have to fight or or well, well you know, I see all those I see all those trucks on the road going into uh, uh, in, into Kiev. And uh, I think of them lined up like that and go, I just wish I had a jet right now with bombs and I they're could not, just... They're not all there anymore, Alex. Today in the news or last night in the news, they're, they're moving them now. They're dispersing. Well, no, what they're doing is they're pulling them off the side of the road so they, right. they can't be found by, uh, <clears throat> by missiles. Right but the, I, you know, I saw one shot where they were going through and just blowing up tanks on the road and I went... God, I wish I were in that plane. You know, you know, this country has a habit of of doing humanitarian things when things are uh, late in the in the picture. Well, you we know, we got know. we got into World War Two late. We were in World War well, One. We attacked. That was the, well, no, that was we different. no Japan attacked us. We used that as a pretense to get into the European right. Right. war as well. But right. the thing was, World War One. We what were we? Correct me if I'm wrong, Josh. weren't we just in World War One for about six months, eight months, and that was it? Towards yeah, it was a little longer. Than very that, tail end of that the, war. Yeah, the last you know twenty percent of we, it. But yeah. we always we always wait when these countries come under attack until it's almost over before we jump in. Yeah, and, and then and we think, jump. Then we jump in and act like we're the good guys. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I think getting in something with Russia, we got to be all in though. But the world's going to be all in on Russia. Yeah. Uh, all they need is a missile to hit one of those nuclear reactors or have a missile go into one of the NATO countries by accident, and they're in a world of hurt. So. Yeah, yeah. So I, well, I mean, it's just, I, I mean, I, I know that, <clears throat> I mean, look, I, I get the arguments. I'm just saying, and, and I know that this might not really have been possible, but... Mm-hmm. You know, had the world, quote unquote, or whatever, s- decided that in 1939, you know, um, they were going to be more aggressive when you know a blitzkrieg rolled into into Poland, you know, maybe things would have went a little different, right? I mean, I, I'm not trying to equate the two, but I'm saying it's it's the it's the same thing. It, we're kind of hearing the same arguments, you know, when that happened, which was well, you know, he's just kind of this, that, the other, you know. Well, you know, I mean, it's not that bad, and then it took off. So, yeah, mm-hmm. well, now it comes down. Oh, by the way, I, I, I have to take time out to praise the Polish people. Oh, absolutely! Uh, and absolutely. I came up with a new Polish joke. Oh, really? Yeah. A new Polish joke. You ready for it? How many poles does it take to uh, screw in a light bulb? Wasn't it back in the old days two hours? Oh, Tony. I want to hear the joke. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, I'll How say many? it again. How many does it take to screw in a How light bulb? Many? How many? How many? One. One? See, they're no longer a joke. Oh, <laughs> you know? Did you hear about the Polish firing squad? They're standing in a circle. No, 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 no. Yeah. You see, you don't get it. What I'm yeah, saying I is... All, all those... <clears throat> Is that they're not they're not a joke anymore. They really turned out to be good people. I I understand what you're saying. (laughs) Romania and all those countries, you know, they're all taking those in, and then you see those people that are going over there to cook for people. I mean, geez, you know, how can you? I can't imagine grabbing a suitcase and the family and just gone and leave everything behind. You know, what do you take with you? You're talking about food. How are people eating and all that? All those basic things, you know. Yeah, toilet. You know, yeah, the, the, the those water. people that are going over there and helping. I saw a bunch of chefs that are going over there, or they're over in, in Europe that are helping out. You know, and they they say, hey, we're we're making huge, you know, big volume of food that is nutritious for them because we know a lot of these people have been not eating properly, you know, mm-hmm. and walking for so long, and they're exhausted to really fill them up. And it's like all those countries, you know, and. It, I'm sure they can't do it for a long, long time, but you know they're really with open arms, you know, helping everybody out. Right? It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's really uh, it's one, it, of the, uh, one, one of the things is is Poland has got a very low vaccination rate, and so they go from the fire into a frying pan, and people are starting to get sick from COVID there. But what can you do? Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah. 
But uh, I just, you know, well, I, I just I think, mean, I, yeah. What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, I just, it just, it just seems like the lessons from World War II are just sort of not being learned that this yeah. fear of escalation is leading to inaction, mm-hmm. which is then actually just going to lead to escalation. Yeah. Because the aggressor I is agree, not yeah. going to reach a point where they say, oh, okay, I, I got what I wanted. Um, I'm good now. Mm-hmm. We're right. over. I, I don't, I, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, totally I don't you, think Josh. that that's going to happen. Hitler didn't take Poland and then say, oh, well, we got all the land that we uh, were, uh, you know, disputing and it's a, uh, it's all good now. And, uh, well, we can't, we can't can we allow, join the United we, Nations. No, I mean, we can't allow Putin to feel he won this one, no you know? Uh, we've got to send him back to Russia with his tail between his legs. Uh, you know, but I mean, it, it, it's horrible that he's bluffing us with this World War Three thing. And uh, I think we're letting ourselves be bluffed. I think he, it, this has kind of backfired on him. He didn't realize the Ukrainians were going to fight back, um, unlike the Poles in World War II. Uh, and the other thing is he was trying to, with this... Uh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, get ready my nuclear weapons that that made our country and NATO stronger and he expected it to go the other way. Around. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. He's he's not going to give up. He's not going no. he's no. he's stubborn, so stubborn. He's not going to give up. So we've got to do something to make him give up. I, I don't know if this is possible, but could he be more stupid than Trump? Um, I mean, Trump didn't start a war, so here, here, no, he couldn't be stupider than Trump because Trump was so stupid he believed Putin. Right there, you go. Okay. Somebody said that on CNN last night that, that Trump doesn't even believe there's a war going on. Mm. Yeah. But, you know, all the lies that they spread say, "Oh, military bases," and you see those apartments, that, you know, go like this, and you just see this hole, literally a hole in there. Yep. And, you know, the maternity wards, the hospitals, all yep. these, all these uh, hand, how I, I don't know how they put it, but, you know, these assisted learning. Kids, you don't hear very much. Of, places too. What the you hell? don't hear very much about them hitting military bases or military this installations. Is, is, some airports. Some, yeah. some the Russian, airports. Right. This is the Russian playbook. Excuse they me, I've got an itchy Crimea. nose. What? They did it in Crimea also. You know, it's their playbook, Russia, is to go and kill civilians. Yeah. Well, look so at what they did in Syria. Right, same thing. And, and sure there enough. they use biological and chemical. Absolutely. And and that's that it's their playbook, unfortunately. All I'm saying is I think we gotta get tough with Russia and I think we gotta go in and save these people's lives. You I, know? I think so. I think I, 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 I think we did that it, a couple of weeks ago. You know. But, and I think like you're saying also it's excuse not Excuse me, folks, life. I'm not picking I'm not picking my nose. My nose is itching like crazy. Let's all itch our nose. But it, it's yeah. not yeah. just it's not just saving those people. I think it's also what else is going to come after that. Absolutely, you know, he's going to have big balls to just do whatever he wants after that, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, this is going to embolden him. There's no question about it. And I just think that we we should be going in there. Uh, we should call we would call it a no fly zone. And if anybody flies over it, you shoot them down. Absolutely. That's it. <laughs> what is, I don't know. Sam has thought though he's gonna blow everybody up you know kill everybody or have everybody get out of that country and then what is he gonna bring all the russian people over there and how are you how are you how many people is it going to take to put uh at least 30 million people under your thumb how many people does it take to 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 do that especially when they don't want you there i mean look at what happened to us in vietnam yeah you know, there was no way we were going to win that war. We couldn't figure out how to win it because the people you had know, nothing to the, lose by fighting us. The, the conventional thought of guerrilla style warfare that is if you are facing an insurgency mm-hmm. or a determined guerrilla style warfare, the common ratio, I think, you know, is historically among military planners, they like to see a 10 to 1, you know, uh, ratio of combatants to, uh, you know, the invasion force or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, depending on who, what it is, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I, I don't know. Is, is that the population of Ukraine? I gonna, guess I, the population of Ukraine is somewhere around, 
I think 35 million, maybe 40 yeah. million. Uh, I, I saw a, a one time it said 33 million, but I think that's gone up. I mean, so but any, but then then that, you've had like about two and a half million leave. Okay, right. but I mean anywhere in that ballpark. I mean, even if you're off by twenty percent, I mean, it's it's hard to imagine a, a good scenario where if they're determined that I don't know what the troop size was. I think he's mobilized somewhere around 300, 350 thousand troops. You know that that amount of troops is going to be able to take over that population. That's going to be so difficult, but that's why I do believe that the one tool that they have that is helping that power is the same tool that has changed warfare since World War II, and that is the air superiority. Mm -hmm. So if the world could at least take the step to remove that tool from Russia's war chest, that significantly could change the game, you know, but there have been reluctant to do so as we've been talking about and i getting to the point where i don't i don't much understand it right now i i i, just, I think i think this is going to cost the democrats in 2022 and in 2024 if he doesn't do something soon it's going to cost him the presidency i don't think he's going to run for president again <laughs> i don't think so you know. yeah i really don't think so I don't, I don't know who we got in the bullpen right now, but it certainly ain't Schumer. I'll tell you that right now. No, that's for sure. Un unfortunately, you know, on the Republican side, you got uh, the idiot uh, governor from uh, Florida. <laughs> yeah, I just don't think he can, he's going to get the traction he thinks he's going to get. I don't know. He's a pretty much a pro-Trumper. Well, he can be a pro-Trumper all he likes. I don't know if being a pro-Trumper is necessarily going to get you the presidency. You know? Exactly. Uh, I think that more and more people in the Republican Party are getting pretty disenchanted with Trump, especially when, with some of his most recent pronouncements. No. I say they run Tucker Carlson for president. Uh, Alex, is that his real hair? I watch him sometimes. Just to, I always wonder if he's got a I, I have no idea. I was never close enough to him to pull at it. So, you know. I watched you on the show. I remember you used to be on it once. When I used to be on the Tucker yeah. Carlson show. Yeah, you know, It wasn't on Fox. It was on MSNBC, yeah. oddly enough. Wow, what a change for him. Mm -hmm. well, no. I mean, is this ultra-liberal to conservative? Well, no, he wasn't ultra-liberal on K oh. MSNBC. Oh. He was he was conservative. Oh. But he loved having me on the show because I was a wild-eyed lefty. And, you know, he, he loved it, you know. And it was finally MSNBC that said, stop that segment on Fridays. We don't, we don't think it's getting you any traction, you know. Uh, didn't, didn't we have a, a, a common approach of solving these problems many years ago? Not the United States, but other countries, where they would kill the president. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, think, I don't think there's a person here and we're all pretty nice people, I think. Who doesn't wish somebody would go in and kill Putin? Well, it's somebody in Congress, not Mitch McConnell, but somebody else. No, liked it, him. it was uh, what's his name, Lindsey Graham. It's the only time I ever agreed with a guy. Yeah, Lindsey Graham said uh, they're hoping that somebody goes and puts a bullet in Putin's head. Yeah, yeah, but they well, can't get close enough. Do you see how long that table is? Yeah, no shit. I was going to say, how insulated do you think he is? You'd have to have a sniper's rifle to get him yeah, from the other end of the table. It's like, yeah. He's like on one end. He's like, I mean, no, but he's really he's really paranoid. The only people watching yeah. out for him now are former KGB friends of his, mm -hmm. are his close inner circle. Uh, they should send John Wick. Send John Wick in there. John, John, John Wick. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, hey, just wanted to drop in here for just a second. Heard this great conversation. And I think Putin suffers from the same problem that world leaders seem to suffer from and that is no sense of history mm. you know you guys were talking about vietnam perhaps putin doesn't remember how long russia was in afghanistan and got its ass whipped by guys who didn't even have the kind of weaponry that's available yeah he does have an advantage here because in afghanistan he wasn't he didn't know the ter the terrain. He didn't know the territory. Yeah, that's true. Where, where, yeah, where, when it comes to, to uh, when it comes to um, um, uh, 
U Ukraine, uh, it's pretty much Russia, you know. So he knows the terror. He knows the. Uh, but the Alex, terrain. you pointed out something just a moment ago, and that is people will fight for their homes. You know, we spent 20 years in Afghanistan. Russia spent 10, 15 years. How long did we stay in Vietnam? You know, from 1956 to 1975? These world leaders have no sense of history that um, people who are fighting for their own, just like the colonies did against Britain, well, well you also have to you have to remember also that a guy like Putin is a singular human being who mm -hmm. is now so separated from reality because he separates himself from the rest of the world. And these guys get to think they're the most important leader in the world. You know, uh, I'll give you a good example. Uh, Idi Amin. Um, many people said that Idi Amin, when he was in power, thought that he was the most important leader in the world literally mm. thought that because they are so isolated they get to live this fever dream you know that they're more powerful than they really are and in the case of of putin he's a terrible tactician because this war has it should have been over in three days but he's a terrible terrible leader for a war mm. so that being the case let's show him how bad he really is you know, and send him back to Russia with his tail between his legs. Or maybe not send him back, just put a $25 million bounty on his head and said, hey, somebody go get the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. John Wick. <laughs> John Wick, yeah. He's the only one. Yeah. Uh, but but you really think Putin's just going to say, oh, we made a mistake, we shouldn't do this. Well, Putin, Putin's got to, you see, what you got to do with Putin, he's got to find some way out that doesn't make him look bad. Not that he doesn't look bad, but, you know, he's not, do you agree with me, Josh? He's not going to give up just because things are going bad. He won't admit failure. And Josh, is there ever been history that some, someone's done like that? Big dictator just retreat? Napoleon. Napoleon. <laughs> Hitler. Hitler in, uh, in Russia. R Russia was Yeah, very... I mean, they'll, they'll all, you know, run back to their homeland and put up a defense when they're forced to but that's what I've, we've been saying is it you know it's going to take an overwhelming force to do so and uh we're not we're not really committing anything you know that i and when i say we i don't really just mean the united states i mean you, you know to me I, if nato was ever created for anything is this not what it was created for Absolutely. i mean I don't know. I mean, I understand that Ukraine doing isn't much. a member of NATO, but this is this is the guy trying to tap in a nail with a pair of pliers or something, and you're standing there thinking, you know, they made a tool. For By the that. way, who I mean, who tried who tried to disassemble NATO? Trump. Trump. He was trying to weaken. I think yeah. I think he right. was doing. I think he was Russia's behest. I think I mean, he. I think he was doing Putin's bidding. Yeah. I think he was actually Putin's bitch. Oh yeah. He could have made a narrative that I was thinking he could have made a narrative that if they would have weakened NATO, I was thinking, you know, brother, and they would have went on a false narrative like, oh, yeah, he's doing some inhumane things. Oh, his whole, his whole gripe about NATO was they weren't paying their fair share of yeah, NATO. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah. But there's no but, reason. I mean, no, I mean, a guy who doesn't pay anybody, really. <laughs> but, you know, if, if, I mean, Putin is disconnected from you know, uh, a sense of history because, you know, if, if anything, he should understand that no leader of the Soviet Union, of Russia, of whatever you want to name them because their name has changed every 15 minutes throughout history, no leader really lasts long, okay? Now, I understand a couple decades or whatever. I mean, they, they may last a little while. And just, Stalin lasted. Stalin up. lasted a good long time. I mean, but, but what I'm saying is, but they always end up with a... a a demise at the end. I mean, they never exit gracefully, okay? They all find themselves either dead, not by their own choice, or thrown out on the streets with nothing. I mean, you know, it's it's not, you know, I, I remember reading, I can't even remember the, the book that I read, but I remember reading a book a couple years ago that said, you know, right before Khrushchev was thrown out, you know, that there's this old story about the phone call to him one night where 
they said, uh, Mr. Khrushchev, you know, the, the Premier Khrushchev the phone's for you. And he picks it up and he says, hello, this is Premier Khrushchev. And, you know, no one says anything. And he says, I'm listening, you know, and the voice on the other end of the phone said, you should have been listening a long time ago and hung the phone up. You know, yeah. and the next day they talked mm. about, I mean, you yeah. know. Well, I mean, but here, not, here's, uh, here's, here's the deal. Oh, you know, I mean, these people have to understand that um, they can't go on doing this forever. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a very passive person. I don't believe in violence and all of that, but I really think somebody's got to put a bullet through Putin's head. I think that's the only way he's going to be stopped. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he's just out of sheer frustration. If he feels he's losing, you don't want him to even feel he's losing. Is going to pull out the biological weapons and the chemical weapons and even the nuclear weapons. So uh, you're saying you're trying to avoid World War III? He's going to do it anyway if he doesn't feel he's yeah. winning. I mean, that's 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 sort of been my point. You know, was that there's going to be an escalation, probably, in my opinion, no matter what you do. So whatever you do, you might as well make it worth your time. And I don't know that saying, "Well, we're not going to buy your oil." You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. That's a that's a great step. That's necessary, but I, I I don't think doing that and then then standing around and saying, well, look, we we embargoed this. Well, you know, that I, that's not. I don't think that's going to change anything for him personally. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just how I my read on that. Well, but you I, know, I, also also you got to remember something. Yes, we're hitting him where he lives, the money, and so on and so forth. But right. but. You know, I, I don't think that the whole, uh, all of Russia is going to collapse because they don't have a McDonald's to go to for dinner, yeah. you know, or a Starbucks to go get coffee. Uh, there was a report out of Russia today that said that approximately 65 to 71% of the Russian people currently support Putin. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just not hearing that part of the story. Well, for the same but, reason, for the same reason, uh, Jack, that that uh, a lot of people believed uh, Trump. When mm -hmm. uh, only messaging you're getting is yeah. that you're winning and that he's doing a great thing, and that we're fighting Nazis in the in Ukraine and drug dealers. That's his whole push. Mm -hmm. If that's the only news you get. I like Marjorie has a close friend. I'm, we have a close friend who is Russian, and she lives here. And she's I think she's an American now, but she lives here. And she calls back home to her mother and to her friends and everything. And she kind of defends what Putin is doing because everybody there tells her, "Well, have you heard they're using little baby kids to use as uh, as uh, uh, Shield. shields?" For, for, for people with guns, you know, and things like that. All these lies that Putin's been putting out. And you say, well, why doesn't somebody speak the truth? Well, if you speak the truth, you get 12, you get 15 years in prison, okay? You can't say we're losing the war in, uh, in, uh, 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 in, the, in Ukraine uh, because what's going to happen is you get arrested and thrown in jail for 15 years. So nobody's going to talk against him. So you're going to say you say that the majority of the people are with him. It's only because they have lack of knowledge of what's really going on. Well, what happened to things like Voice of America, Radio Free Europe? How come we dismantled them? They're still there. Are they operating? Still? Yes. Oh, I, yeah. heard oh, I saw a report them. today from them. Oh, they I'll had a, they had the only uh, the only reporter embedded in the front forces fighting against the Russians. Well, that gives me an idea about who I'm going to try to have as a guest on the intersection next time, next week. Somebody from uh, Voice of America. My old boss went to work as the head of Voice of America at one who point. Who was your old boss? Uh, R. Peter Strauss. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember him. Yeah, and he, uh, he got a job as the head of Voice of America. You have worked with and been fired by some of the best. Oh, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Catch you at the top so, of the Okay, see you later, Jack. Jack, Jack is going, wait, bye-bye. Wait, bye-bye. Goodbye, -bye. Bye, Jack. Yeah, goodbye, Jack. But, you know, I'm just saying that, I mean, if, if NATO is not able or willing to take some effort here, I mean, then what was it created for? I mean, what, then what does it take to mobilize 
NATO. Well, what it is, it, I mean, it, I, I, it, it takes for one of the countries in in NATO to go again, you know, to do it. Right, right. Well, right. Which I mean, I get that. So that's what I'm saying. To be a, if to this be attacked, were Poland and not Ukraine, you know. So then it's just a matter of membership. Would we be sitting I mean, there even with NATO you know, and saying maybe we shouldn't do this because it'll start World War Three? I mean, I'm tired I mean, of this. That's, you know, I mean, that's what I'm getting at. So you're telling me that you know, like, let's say this were Poland that he had invaded. So we, we, the world, NATO would be going ape shit and fighting him and bombing him and you know all this other stuff. So then it's just a matter of membership, which, by the way, Ukraine had you know been asking for anyway. I mean. And you were afraid to let him in because you were afraid if you did that it would lead to this. But it did lead to this. I mean, so, I mean, I'm kind of, I guess, back to my original point, which was it's going to escalate no matter what. Well, the thing is, the thing is, this war borders this war borders NATO countries. And so that does threaten NATO. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, what's to say that one of those, oh, look who's looking in. Look! Look at that. I saw. Was you? She been doing that for a while, and I haven't no, noticed it. Oh. That's the first one. That's the first one. I don't think it's going to be the last. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I just. What'd you say? I just look at that. Oh, go ahead. He, you were talking to him. I'm sorry. No, no, I just said when the door handle goes down, you know she's coming in. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just. There, there we I, go. I see. It, I mean, I'm starting to see it like, <laughs> like, like the United Nations. You know what it's I'm saying? Okay. I mean. Yeah. United Nations can't give me a parking ticket. Fuck. I mean, yeah. well, the United you know, the United the Nations here, the United Nations was not in not formed as a police organization. Right. They were formed as an organization where if there was problems in the world, maybe there was a place where we could all talk about them. Yeah, yeah. so they'll let the Russians show up and and spread their fucking propaganda on worldwide television and sit there like, "Well, what can we do?" Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean it's just you know, I hear reports that because they allow the Russians so much access in the United Nations that there are people advising the Ukrainians not to give any information to the United Nations, such as GPS coordinates of their field hospitals and all that kind of stuff, and to refuse supplies from the United Nations because they're scared that the, that the Russians will take the information from the UN yeah. and use it to bomb right strategically target ukrainian troops because apparently yeah. they used to do that in syria they they would they would just have their people at the un pull up that info and then they would take it and they would use it so when is it time to maybe boot them out of that organization you know i mean the only way you're going to stop him is with aggression and containment and if you have to turn russia into north korea by basically walling them off from the world and fucking ignoring them and mm -hmm. not so much as selling them a fucking bowl of cereal and if they all starve to death mm -hmm. because they won't get rid of him that's their problem yeah. i mean they have to take care of that well but they don't, they don't. containment isn't going to work yeah. if you keep letting him burst at the seams i mean that's well and this know. this threat i'm going to use nuclear weapons well go ahead use your nuclear nuclear weapons and watch us respond and you will be yeah. nothing but dust Okay. You know, and I thought that Joe Biden was a Democrat who was sort of like myself with some war hawkish mentality because he understood what could happen if you allowed things to go beyond a certain limit. Mm -hmm. And I, I was either wrong mm -hmm. or I was right. And I'm also right about what I was saying earlier, which is that he is making decisions based on the fact that he wants to not make anyone upset so he can get reelected. And well, I, you know, that's I, I'm, a, that's, I'm disappointed that's, either that, way. That, I that's the goddamn know? problem with this country, is that we should be doing the right thing for you, for humanity, okay? And we're not doing the right thing for humanity because somebody's running for office again. He's always thinking yeah. about the next election and the polling numbers. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I want one president who goes, fuck the polling numbers. I'll do what's right. And if I only get one term out of that, fine. I can go home and sleep well at night, you know? Well, I mean, you know, that that used to be sort of our idea. I mean, that's sort of the way we should be set up, you know, with this, a Republican form of government, etc. I mean, did, did Roosevelt ever think about his poll numbers? Well, I, no. I, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, everybody does. I mean, and they did poll back then. Um, 
but it didn't guide him in the way that I mean maybe I'm wrong maybe it's not guiding Joe Biden maybe he really believes this other way will work or maybe he's got some information that we all just don't have you know I don't know I'm just saying from my perspective and my understanding of history and how these things typically I just don't like the path that he's on and it, I just think that it's I mean, I'm, I don't think he's terrible or anything. I'm just disappointed that things I haven't think, been handled I a think, differently. And the world's doing the same thing. I mean, it's not just Joe Biden. You know what I'm saying? If Joe Biden, yeah, I, I, if Joe Biden, if that. Joe Biden were to say to the rest of those NATO countries, "It's time we do something about this. We well, cannot yes. let him get away with it," they would listen to Joe Biden. I, I agree with you there <laughs> that if the Americans said, "Enough is enough." This is what we're going to do. That I, I, I don't believe that the rest of NATO would say, "Oh no, no, we, we you know, we're out." You know, I, I don't believe that. I think you're right there. That that we are going to have to be the ones, you know, that say. I mean, it's one thing for Poland to say, "Well, we'll, we'll do." Come on, I mean, it's the Americans who have to take care. Of how great is the Ukraine? How been. great is the Ukrainian president? Well, he's an inspiring guy for them. You know, I mean, that's. I mean, he is, uh, he is, I mean, I wish we had a leader like him sometime, you know, uh, who could. Yeah, I mean, he's a, you know, he's an inspiring guy for them, which is good. I mean, he's got the right attitude about what they need to do, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I sort of don't understand some of their negotiating that, you know, I mean, to me, they don't have anything to negotiate. They should, you know, take the. You know, U.S. They should take the U.S. Grant line there, which is <laughs> there is no negotiation. Well, There's unconditional did you hear the other day the Russian? That's it. The Russian says we're going to give you an we're going to give you a a corridor out of the country, but it goes to Russia. Yeah, yeah. You could only right. leave if you went to Russia. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's I have an alternate. You're what? What are you going to suggest? With someone who's not gonna deal with Jeff, you. what's your suggestion? Yeah, you know, I'm always trying to figure out different alternate approaches to do things. And I don't know if they're ever going to happen, but if we just decide to take another million people from one location or two million people and put them in other countries, mm -hmm. okay? and at the same time, what that property is, that now there's no more people on it. And they just blow it up so that that the property is not useful for Russia to pick it up. Well, it's garbage. You know, I just want those people to be able to go back home. I don't want them to be able to well, carry. Well, they can go back later if it's if it can be re. Well, if you can get Russia, if you can get Russia out of there. Yeah. But that yeah, they, I mean, to me, the only way that the world is going to move forward from this in a positive way is if it ends in defeat for Putin. And by defeat, I mean he doesn't get anything, hardly anything or ideally nothing. They got to pack up all their shit and they got to go back home. He get, you know, all, all he gets to keep is all he gets to keep is the tail between his legs. Correct. You know. You know. But I mean, I mean unless we get tough with him now, he's going to take this as a sign he can get away with anything. Yeah. yeah, I do think the longer that it goes on, you know, that that's yeah, yeah possible. Yeah. Hey, there's the theme. Wow, good show tonight. Really mm. good. You know, Josh, always, always brilliant. Great to have you here. Uh, mm. And uh, thanks to uh, uh, Alan for joining us again. Some nice comments tonight. Uh, Jeff, very good. Tony hasn't said much of anything. Uh, you have anything to say? Any any last two cents worth to put in? Uh, I hope the best for Cambridge Bomb. I heard you early on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think we all feel that way. And uh, and uh, uh, also, uh, uh, Brian, thank you so much. And a special appearance by <laughs> Adrian. We, we sent you a little something. It'll be there Monday, they say. That's what be I careful. hear. Be careful because there's a hat with a, there's a rock inside there. So be careful when you open it up. 
<laughs> oh, why? Because I might knock myself out putting the cap on? Or you to drop it on something and yeah. break it. Okay. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Thanks, everybody, for coming by tonight. A small group of people, but a good group of people, okay? Always enjoy having them here. And it, it turned out to be a good discussion, too, so it didn't matter whether we had t 15 people or, or five people. Uh, we had a good crowd here. Anyway, uh, listen, uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. I'll see you back here on Monday uh, at uh, 4 o'clock on uh, Facebook with Alex Bennett's pop-up. And then we'll be back here on uh, next week on, uh, on, on Wednesday uh, with uh, more of the same, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? And you know the rest. I'm not even going to tell you about wearing a mask anymore. You don't need to, but you need to be vaccinated. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend, okay? Bye. Bye.